Hi, I'm Andrew Pierce with Epics at Purdue. In this module, we're going to talk about safety procedures and what to do in the case of an emergency in the Epics labs. So to start off with, you will sign at the beginning of the semester the Epics Lab Safety and Use Guidelines contract. This is found in My Epics, and you'll be prompted to, you, to sign that whenever you log into My Epics. Please make sure you read through it carefully and follow those rules. A few common reminders of things that you need to take into account in the lab. Make sure that when you're doing any work in the lab that could have hazard to your eyes that you're wearing safety glasses. Uh, make sure you wear pants and closed-toed shoes anytime that you're working with power tools, especially in our build lab. There's no spray painting allowed in the lab. We can make an exception for some small spray painting activities in the fume hood, but anything that you're doing that's larger than that, we don't want to fill the lab full of other students with a bunch of fume. So please take those outside and be aware of where you do them. Uh, our facilities don't want you to spray paint all of the sidewalks where people are walking um, and to make a mess that way. So make sure you lay out ground cloths use some common sense. Most of our tools are freely available to you 24 hours a day, including some of our basic power tools. Please be safe with those or those accessibility will be taken away. There are a few tools that we've indicated as having a higher hazard level, including our router, our miter saw, and our circular saw, amongst others, and those will be locked. In order to get to use them, you'll need to find an undergraduate TA, a graduate TA, myself or our lab manager, Jorge, and we can unlock them for you and teach you, make sure you know how to use them. Please use your common sense in the lab. Most of the time when accidents happen, it's because there has been someone doing something that common sense would tell them not to do. But if something does happen and accidents can happen, make sure that you call 911 and make sure you let myself or Jorge know about it. We once had a battery left on its side and all of the acid poured out on a Saturday the students called the fire department and had them come in, and I didn't find out about it for a week later. So please don't let those sorts of situations happen. Make sure that we're made aware of anything that comes up. Some general safety recommendations. If there's an accident, call 911. If it's a small scratch or something, you can go to push. But in general, make sure that you get emergency services. We suggest you sign up for the Purdue text alerts. Um, you should be shown how to do that as soon as you get on campus. That'll let you know how to react in a situation and give you information on what's going on. And make sure you review the Armstrong Building Emergency Plan. That's linked on our website, or you can search the Armstrong Building um, on Purdue's website, and you'll find those emergency plans, which give detailed information on what to do in an emergency. There are generally two types of emergencies that happen on campus. The first is a shelter-in-place emergency, and the second one is an evacuation. Shelter-in-place emergencies are indicated by the all-hazard warning, or what a lot of us know as the tornado siren. And there are three general causes for that. The first would be severe weather, and this is by far the most likely. We get tornadoes here in Indiana, and if you hear that warning siren outside the building, you know you want to go down into the basement. The second uh, occasion for a shelter-in-place would be a hazardous material release on campus. There are a number of very hazardous materials including gases on campus that could be released into the environment and cause that warning to go off. This is where you want those Purdue text alerts. If a heavy gas were released on campus and you went down into the basement of the building, you're obviously walking right into the heavy gas and that's a bad idea. If you have those text alerts, you'll be warned otherwise. The third and hopefully least likely would be an active shooter situation. We have had these situations happen on campus, so it's good to prepare yourself just in case something were to arise. The other form of emergency is an evacuation. This is typically indicated by the fire alarm. So if you hear the alarm going off inside the building, you wanna get out. If you hear the alarm going on outside the building, you wanna go into the basement, typically. That shelter in place is indicated again by the all hazard siren. You wanna go downstairs into the basement. You wanna go into one of the hallways where there are no glass or other hazards around. If we do have an active shooter, it's good to be prepared. And that reduces your panic and helps you to respond in a positive way to the situation. We strongly recommend that you watch the When Lightning Strikes video, which is offered through the Purdue Emergency Preparedness website. It's a short video, but it does a very good job of helping you to think through how you'll react in such a situation. Again, evacuations are indicated by the fire alarm inside the building. If you hear that alarm, please evacuate immediately. Don't assume that it's a drill. In the case of an evacuation, please stay with your TA or advisor. Don't leave and disperse elsewhere. We'll send emergency personnel in after you, and if you've left for no reason, we could send them in after you and put those emergency personnel in harm's way. So please make sure that you're accounted for. 
Please provide emergency personnel any information you have available. If you're in the lab and you saw a fire or anything like that, you can give them directions as to where they could find that. The emergency rally point for the Armstrong building is directly between our building and push on the main mall in between. So if you don't know where that is, if you come out the doors um, at the atrium of the building, you'd be right in that location. Um, so in a summary, make sure that in an emergency, you follow the lead of your TA or advisor. They are also trained in knowing what to do in these situations in detail, so follow their lead and stay with them. Accidents can happen in the lab, but if you're hurt, please don't try to hide it, or if there was a near miss, let us know so that we can avoid that situation in the future. So please be safe, have fun in the labs, and help make a difference in your community.